at ease, everybody. Now, where's my map? Come on. Sir. Thank you. God, it's a barren, featureless desert out there, isn't it? <laughs> the other side, sir. <laughs> what makes something funny? When someone tells a joke and it makes people laugh, what qualities must that joke possess? Almost everyone has their own answer to this question. Some will argue it is to do with the element of surprise, whilst others will argue it's a release of built-up emotion. The problem is, all of these techniques are exactly that. Various ways and styles in which a joke can be delivered. There are a thousand and one ways to tell a joke, but really the singular quality that is required in order for a joke to be a joke is something far simpler than many would have you believe. Instead of me telling you what that quality is, I'm going to play you three clips from three films. While you're watching them, I want you to ask what quality do they all share? It stings the nostrils. In a good way. Yeah. Brian, I'm going to be honest with you, that smells like pure gasoline. They've done studies, you know. 60% of the time, it works every time. That doesn't make sense. Sergeant Angel. Morning, the swans escaped. The swans escaped? Yeah. Right, and where's the swan escape from exactly? Ah, uh, the castle. Oh yeah, and who might you be? Mr. Staker. Yeah, Mr. Peter Ian Staker. P.I. Staker, yeah. right. Piss Taker, come on! Yes, Mr. Staker, um, we'll do everything we can. Can you describe it to me? You'd better tell the captain we've got to land as soon as we can. This woman has to be gotten to a hospital. A hospital? What is it? It's a big building with patients, but that's not important right now. So, now that you've seen those clips, what was the one quality they all shared? So, in Anchorman, he says 60% of the time, it works every time. This is a funny line because it's a total non sequitur. He contradicts himself in the same sentence, and by doing so, he looks like a total idiot. This joke is at his expense. Or look at the example from Hot Fuzz. The policeman receives what he thinks is a prank call and makes fun of the caller's name, only for him to learn that the call was legitimate and that he had just insulted a random member of the public. This joke is at the expense of the policeman, because he misunderstood the call, which resulted in him looking like a total idiot. Or you can look at Airplane. This joke is at the expense of the doctor, because he misunderstood the question. An argument could also be made that it was also at the expense of the hostess, because due to her poor choice in words, she left herself vulnerable to this misinterpretation. What is the one trait these three jokes have in common? They all have a victim. And this leads me to make this rather controversial statement. Every joke ever told has a victim. And if you right now disagree with this idea, try to think of a joke that doesn't have a victim. Feel free to pause the video and Google knock knock jokes or watch your favourite sitcom, and whenever you catch yourself laughing, ask who was the victim to that joke? I think that epic fail videos are really comedy in its purest form, where we see people being physically hurt for their mistakes. The Germans have a word for this, and it's called Schadenfreude, which means pleasure derived from someone else's misfortune. And there may be some of you right now thinking, well, what about puns? When Grandad opens a cracker at Christmas and says a pun that makes everyone groan, who is the victim to that joke? Well, it's him the joke teller himself. Most puns fall into a very specific kind of humour, that being self-deprecating humour. The essence to self-deprecating humour is the victim to the joke is not another person, but the joke teller themselves. This is a technique that is very popular amongst stand-up comedians, and I think a comedian who has mastered this style of comedy is Conan O'Brien, these clips being an example of his style of humour. Tinder. Uh, a social networking site where you can find people in your area you've never met, they're in your vicinity, and they're ready to meet and maybe hook up. Naturally, because I'm a creep, I'm intrigued <laughs> when you find out about this. Not even driving. Why are you assuming that Cube knows more about this neighborhood than I do? Why aren't you asking me about this neighborhood? You're, you're absolutely right about that. Carl. That's racist. What, is it Pedro or Pedro? I'm not sure. <laughs> I've never been down here and I'm terrified. <laughs> As you can see, Conan has built himself the character of an 
egotistical creep. Now, it's obvious that Conan in real life is not like this, but he, like most successful self-deprecating comedians, have learned that when you build a character for yourself, and that character has multiple flaws, such as being a pervert or having a massive ego, that can allow said comedian to create witty jokes based around that character's flaws. And this particular style of humour has several advantages. To realise those advantages, you need only look at another late night talk show host, Jimmy Kimmel. Kimmel has done something similar to O'Brien. He has established a character for himself which enables him to create jokes, however his character is based around making other people the victim rather than himself. I wonder if any of you remember when two years ago Kimmel attacked the video game community on YouTube and made them the butt of his jokes for a number of shows. YouTube launched a new video network yesterday where you can watch other people play video games. For real, let the whole network, it's called uh, the We Should All Be Very Ashamed of Ourselves for Failing as Parents channel. <laughs> Actually, it's called YouTube Gaming. All you need to do is look at the like bar to realize the response from the online community was overwhelmingly negative. Any sensible comedian after the first show would have backed off and never mentioned video gaming again in a bad light, but because of Kimmel's persona, he doubled down on the matter and made a great number of videos reinforcing his opinion. The vast majority of comments on his videos were very civil and well structured, however Kimmel cherry picked the absolute worst comments and betrayed them like they were the average member of that community. Yeah, effing kill yourself, you ignorant F. It's clear you have no clue what you're talking about, you irrelevant old man. <laughs> you stupid fat boy, I guess that's me. People love watching people play video games. You're just mad because you will be jobless in a ye one year, you stupid bearded gorilla. Okay. <laughs> Now, technically speaking, what Kimmel did here was good comedy, however he held back no punches and was so totally unafraid of receiving negative backlash, this irreparably damaged his reputation amongst those who like to play video games because many people, even today, years later, have not forgiven him for his remarks. I think this presents the number one danger when it comes to creating comedy, the danger of crossing the very fine line from being a comedian and being a bully. However, when we look back at Conan O'Brien and his self-deprecating humour, it is an entirely different story. He often makes comedic commentary on religion and foreign culture, just watch this. Many ancient sites here, Mount of Olives, right? Yeah. Dome of the Rock. Dome of the Rock. This must be a very ancient site. It says Hyatt Hotel. This must be thousands of years old. This is the hotel where Joseph and Mary couldn't get a room. Is that right? The Hyatt was, was completely booked. And they gave it a terrible Yelp review. In this clip, Conan makes a joke around a foreign culture, which to many comedians is a very easy way to be offensive. Yet Conan does it in a way where he gets a good laugh, however offends absolutely no one. Firstly, when addressing foreign culture, he never comments on something that people might feel insecure about. If he were to comment on the violence between various religions in the area, that would have definitely offended some people. However, he commented on the fact that a Hyatt Hotel exists in Jerusalem. Nobody in Jerusalem feels insecure about the fact that there is a hotel in their city, so nobody would feel offended when he comments on it. And secondly, this comes back to his self-deprecating humour. He says the joke in a way where his character believes the modern hotel existed back in the time of Jesus' birth. Now, of course he didn't believe this, however, when you look at this joke, the main victim to it is not the people of Jerusalem, but himself, for being an idiot foreigner who doesn't understand the local culture. And that really underlines the reason why Conan O'Brien is to many people their favourite comedian, because his humour is so desperately inoffensive. The only real victim to most of his jokes is himself. 
This is the main benefit of doing self-deprecating humour. You can create some extremely funny jokes while offending absolutely no one. And that is a good lesson you can apply when not just doing creative writing, but also in your everyday life. If you want to be a more likeable person, be sure to create jokes that poke fun at yourself rather than other people. Because if you do so, it will make you more likeable, more approachable, and you very well may be one day the host of a late night talk show. Okay, maybe not that last one. I expect most people will disagree with me on this video essay, but at the end of the day, that is not what this channel is about. The point of these videos is to start a conversation, to help people think in new ways that they never did before. So what do you think? Does every joke require a victim, or is the real key to creating comedy something else entirely? I'd love to know what you think in the comments down below. Also before we go, I'd just like to say that if you enjoy these video essays and find them entertaining, then please do consider donating to my Patreon. You do not have to donate a single penny, however if you do you will not only be receiving a number of rewards such as watching all of my videos a week early, but you will also be supporting me doing the thing I love most in this world, and the fact that so many people whose names are all in the description down below believe in me enough to help me achieve my dreams by donating by Patreon means more to me than that money ever could. Anyway. Thanks for watching, please do like and subscribe, and I will see you guys next time on The Closer Look.